This is why your bridge collapsed. To recap, the main bridge over Baltimore Harbor was struck by a container ship and collapsed. Lives were lost tragically. Shipping was paralyzed for weeks. People didn't do their jobs. Why did this happen? These are the engineering assumptions made by the company that designed this thing back in 1977. That was back in the Stone Age. Number one, no sea pilot would be stupid enough to hit one of these bridges in the perfect spot to collapse it. Number two, no one would do it deliberately. And number three, even if they did, the bridge would be strong enough to withstand the wreck. Let's skip talking about this one for the time being. First of all, stupid sea pilots are increasingly probable. There's a global shortage of sea pilots. Pay is about 120 to 180,000, which is not terrible. It requires a bachelor's degree and years of experience. This is the company that hires these people, their Singapore registry. There are various qualifying rules that aren't uniform internationally because of deregulation. And there's an increased likelihood of pilots being impaired, underqualified, ticked off, and disengaged. Harbor pilots are typically older and more highly paid. Current investigation says that this ship was having electrical problems. The regular captain didn't bother to mention this to the harbor pilot. The harbor pilot evidently didn't know differently. The ship lost power and there were no redundant systems. There were multiple levels of people not doing their jobs. Number two, ships are bigger now than they were in 1977. Original container ships were about 800 ton equivalent units. The current ship size is up to 20,000. There are all sorts of ship issues. This one got wedged in the Suez Canal, this one fell over, and this one caught fire. All of this is made worse by the shipping companies wanting to maximize utilization, i.e. run these things indefinitely. So whose job is it to regulate all of this? The answer is nobody's. International shipping is subject to international law. It requires cooperation among shippers and governments. Enforcement is through international courts. How's all that working out for you? In the future, supply chains are shortening post-COVID and post-China. Institutions such as global maritime cooperations are weakening. Hurricanes and weather events are getting worse. Ongoing aging of technically sophisticated employees in all industries, demographics. People are reluctant to pay higher taxes to fix 50-year-old infrastructure. None of this should give us the warm, fuzzy feeling that this problem will get better. People will still not do their jobs.